This is part six in the Craftsman 150 drill press rebuild series. If you haven't seen part five, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we'll be cleaning more parts and polishing them. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. This drill press isn't going to get rebuilt by itself, so let's get started. In part five, we polished the spindle but we did not polish the splined area on the spindle. So we're going to be using the wire wheel on the grinder to clean up those splines. And we're just going to make sure that they're clean of debris and that there are no burrs on them so that the spindle can slide up and down inside the spindle pulley assembly. Now all the things that we polished in part five, I would normally coat with super slick stuff. This stuff is awesome, but I didn't have any. So I used my spray on super loop. And all we're gonna do is apply a coating to all of these parts you see here, and then we'll wipe them down with a rag. Well, almost all these parts. We're not going to coat the chuck body uh, just yet. But there's your sleeve for the chuck. That's one of the rods for the motor mount. And that's the other rod for the motor mount. We have the pinion. And then the quill. And if you recall, we did not polish the inside of the pinion or the quill. So we want to make sure we get them coated pretty well. And then we've got the motor pulley. And then the spindle pulley. And then we're just gonna wipe everything down with a rag and set it aside. So we still have quite a few parts in those bins on the left hand side of the screen there. And those are all the parts that will get cleaned up, but they're not going to get polished. Well, most of them won't get polished. And that's what we're going to be working on in this video. Back over at the wire wheel and we have the motor mount. You can see how badly pitted it is. And we're just going to wire wheel the entire mount. And then we've got the headlock and we're just wire wheeling it. We're going to polish the headlock handle part as well as the table lock handle part. But they're pretty pitted. We'll get them shiny, but uh, they're not going to look like chrome. And this is the feed rod that has the scale on it. And 
and then those are the locks for the head lock and the table lock. Now I use a pair of vice grips to hold any of the small parts like this bolt here. This is the lock screw for the pinion. And then these are the head and table locks again. And I've already applied the uh, mother's mag and aluminum polish to them. And so I'm just using the buffer wheel and I'm buffing them. And like I said, they're not going to look like chrome because uh, they're so pitted, but they'll look good. And you can see them there. So all these parts, again, are going to get the super lube on them. Now, all of those parts across the top of the towel, they all have holes in them that I'm going to clean out before I apply this super lube. If you've got a bottle brush or something like that, uh, you can use that. But after we've coated everything in super lube, we're going to set it in a separate bin, wipe it down. And this is a brush set that I got off of Amazon. And right now I'm using a brass wire brush to clean out the inside of all of these parts. Once they're cleaned out, then we coat them with the super lube. Wipe them down and put them in the bin. So all these parts are done at this point. We won't be messing with them again until we're ready to assemble the drill press. So next I'm going to use a honing stone and I'm going to be squaring the jaws uh, for the Jacobs Chuck. They didn't look real bad, but they were, they showed a little bit of wear. So I'm just squaring them up. Now, unless you're really good at sharpening knives by hand or doing something like this, I would not recommend doing this. So next we're going to be cleaning the table uh, surface as well as the base milled surface. So I'm just screwing down some two by four pieces here. You can see that the table doesn't sit flush right now because the lock area on the table protrudes from the bottom. So these two by fours will allow it to sit level. And then I'll use those three blocks that you see there to hold the table in place so it's not moving around while I'm working on it. So these blocks are cut. They're about the same size as the diameter of the column. So I can sit one directly down in the center of the bore for the column and then screw it down. And that will keep the table from moving from towards me or away from me. And then I'll Put a block on each side of the table and that'll keep it from swinging left to right. And then 
we're going to be using a palm sander. I'm starting off with 80 grit, but I end up going back and going all the way back down to 60 grit and then going to 80 grit and working my way up. For my palm sander, I'm using 60, 80, 100, 120, 150, 180, 220, and I'm finishing off with 320. All of it will just be dry sanding. And I'm just going in the same pattern for each grain. And this table is in, in pretty decent shape. But it does have uh, two spots that are kind of pitted. So you know, I'm just trying to minimize, mitigate that as much as possible. Now, in addition to sanding the table, I'll also sand the boss, which is that ring right around the column bore. And the boss for the, key, the chuck key, which is closest to us in this image. And I'll hit it with each grit of sandpaper, just like the table itself. Now this can be kind of challenging because the sandpaper keeps wanting to go inside those cutouts on the table. So you got to kind of lift the front end or the lead end as you're going across and let the back end kind of do the work. But once you've got the technique down, it's not difficult. And so we're already at the uh, 320 grit here. And I'll do two passes with everything. So I'll do this zigzag pattern all the way up the table away from me and then come back towards me doing the same pattern. And then I'll do the bosses at the top of the table. And I'm not going to polish this to like a mirror shine or anything. It's what you see right now is about as shiny as it's going to get. And I'm just rechecking the work and then polishing the bosses. That's the boss around the column. And then the boss for the chuck key. And the base is similar. So if you have a floor standing drill press, normally the milled table on the floor base is not polished. It's normally painted. But on the benchtop models, they usually did polish the uh, table on them. So we're going to be polishing the table. So I had to add a, an additional two by four there since this does sit flush. And then we're just gonna bolt it down just like we did with the table. And then we'll be sanding it just like we did with the table. We've got the table itself and then we've got the boss around the column.
And again, we're going to go 60, 80, 100, 120, 150, 180, 220, and then 320. And you can still see the swirls in the tabled sur or the milled surface from when they milled it at the factory. And then we sand the boss. And that's that. So with the head, um, you probably noticed in a lot of the pictures of the drill presses I've rebuilt, I normally paint the nose of the head and a different color than the rest of the head. So one of the things that I like to do is make that nose a little bit more defined. And right now I'm just using a file to kind of take down the sides of it a little bit there and the very bottom of it to get it squared off and make it a little bit more defined. It also makes it easier to mask when we go to paint it. And the nose on this head was a little marred up. Um, so I'm going to clean it up with a Scotch-Brite wheel on the angle grinder a little bit. Just pull some of those scratches out of it. And I'll, I'll do the same for the raised area that surrounds the headband. So we're not, we're not pulling every ding out of it or anything like that. We're just giving it a once over really I think the imperfections in the casting are part of the personality of the drill press but so now I'm using uh, some of those bottle brushes again this is just a nylon one and I'm cleaning out all of the bore holes that are in the head And if there's any rust in them, then I'll use a brass brush, but most of it will be just a nylon brush. We do not want to take off any material, really. Um, a lot of this stuff, especially the holes for the spindle pulley assembly, it has bearings that sit right in there, and we don't want to take that down in any way. That bottom bore for the spindle pulley assembly was pretty rusted. That's where the uh, outer snap ring goes. So I'm going to clean it up with the brass brush. And then we'll do the bores on the table for the column. The chuck key bore. And then the table lock bores. You can see the rust that's in that table lock bore. So that'll get a brass brush. Just 
just like that. Super easy. And then we'll do the same for the base. So I clean out all the screw holes that are in the head casting and the base as well. And I just use the nylon brush for that. I don't want to mess up the threads in there or anything like that. I just want to get them clean. Okay, that will pretty much wrap up part six. Part seven coming soon. I hope you found this helpful and you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I appreciate all the support and I will see you next time.